Have you ever wondered about the mystery of the brilliant white temple gleaming over the San Luis Rey River Valley? What is the Rosicrucian Fellowship, and why do they settle in Oceanside? Join us in discovering the answers to these and other questions as we explore the Oceanside Rosicrucian Fellowship story. In the spring of 1995, this brilliant white Rosicrucian Fellowship Temple became a California historical landmark. The groundbreaking of the Rosicrucian Fellowship started in October of 1911 at the site now called Mount Ecclesia. It is the purpose of the Rosicrucian Fellowship to unite and harmonize each with the others by teaching a religion that is both scientific and artistic and gather all churches into one great Christian brotherhood. One of the members, Charles Weber, explains how the founder, Max Heindel, started the Oceanside Rosicrucian Fellowship. The Rosicrucian Fellowship was started in formally in 1909 with a prior history for that formation, the actual uh, founding here of the fellowship at Mount Ecclesia was in 1911. Uh, Max Heindel is the founder of the Rosicrucian Fellowship and um, he was given the teachings, what are called the Western Wisdom teachings, uh, by an elder brother of the Rose Cross when he was in Germany seeking answers. He brought those teachings back to the United States uh, in the form of a book which was originally given to him as thought transference by one of the elder brothers and he translated from the German. He retranslated his um, English version. He disseminated those teachings by uh, lectures, through lectures, and through the publication of the Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception, which were a formulation of those original teachings. And that was published in 1909. The Fellowship Grounds was given the name Mount Ecclesia by Max Heindel right at its inception, as far as we can tell. And uh, the word Ecclesia is a Greek word. It means a uh, company of believers or those who are summoned or those who are called. And um, in its, in its um, American or English sense, it has come to mean those things pertaining to a church, as in ecclesiastical. But a Mount Ecclesia was Max Heindel's term, and it is f to designate the people who collect here for the purposes of carrying out the, the behest of the Elder Brothers and disseminating the teachings. Max Heindel chose this area. He was given some clues as to what area would be appropriate, this area being uh, in the environs. At that time, it was in the environs of Oceanside because uh, the Oceanside city limits were further towards the ocean. And right now, we are Oceanside extends very much east of this, this place, but at that time uh, he was following uh, the suggestion of an elder brother that he find a place that to the east was uh, provided a snow-capped mountain backdrop and then to the west a view of the ocean. And he, he found a place in Ocean Park that suited this description, but he could not for various uh, legal reasons eventually consummate a, 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 an acquisition. And um, he was um, dejected. He came to Oceanside by train and found that there was a piece of real estate available. He saw it. It was, we understand, a pea patch, a rather uh, a large pea patch, among other things, and he, he saw that it entirely suited his purposes, and he was able to make a down payment on it, and uh, it became the home of the fellowship. The fellowship itself, uh, as it exists here on Mount Ecclesia, uh, as I said, was founded in 1911. It was found important to have a physical site for both the dissemination of the teachings and for uh, the second 
of the two main functions of the fellowship, the first being the dissemination, the second being the healing of the sick, which are the two principal injunctions by Christ, given by Christ Jesus, uh, to heal the sick and, and to uh, give out the message of the gospel. The healing of the sick a aspect is, concentrates on spiritual healing because it's recognized that man being primarily a spiritual being, uh, everything proceeds from uh, the uh, occult or non-visible members of the, of the human being. Therefore, for instance, in the Gospel it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That has to do also uh, with the physical being that is that proceeds out of the thinking and feeling. So using, in conjunction with the teachings and astrology, the healing department um, introduces the individual who has sought help to uh, the principles um, <clears throat> of right, so-called right living, and um, realizing that we put into effect causes that later become materialized. So um, astrology can help us in this regard because um, it can show us what sort of tendencies that we have, what sort of impulses that we have, how these may have contributed to problems that we are experiencing on the emotional and physical level, and how we can address these. The constellation, the natural zodiac, is considered by us as the 12 divine hierarchies. And this is why we have a great respect uh, for astrology. Uh, also, these uh, divine hierarchies or uh, signs of the zodiac are mentioned in the Bible. This is in Genesis chapter 49 and also in uh, Deuteronomy. If the student in astrology or the astrology is able to understand a horoscope uh, to help a person because what is included in a horoscope are the lessons already learned by an immortal spirit, by a spirit, and the lessons which must still be learned. So it is evident that if we consider astrology uh, this way, there are lessons to learn on how to have correct thoughts, how to have correct emotions, and how to uh, keep a good health. To accomplish the purposes of uh, the Rosicrucian Fellowship, we have uh, a few activities. The, one of the first activity is to spread our teaching through correspondence courses. We have correspondence courses in philosophy, in Bible, and in spiritual astrology. And with these courses, we can reach people all over the world. Another activity to spread the teaching uh, are our summer school. Each year, we have a summer school in English during the summer. And uh, next year, in 1997, we will have a Spanish summer school. Other activities we have are the Rays magazine. And through the Rays magazine, we also uh, spread our teaching. The Rays magazine uh, always include a message from Ma Max Endel always include something on the Cosmo Conception and something on our Bible. You know, uh, people always think that uh, uh, either a religious order or a spiritual order has, or organization or association, has something to hide. And this is the first thing we say, we have nothing to hide. Everything here is open. 
uh, the teaching is available to everybody. Our services, uh, uh, temple service, uh, uh, healing service, are open to everybody. The evolution or to spiritually be able to progress is a question of working on ourselves and working within. Uh, somebody outside cannot give you a spiritual uh, progress or we must do the work ourselves. So this could be a challenge or you have something you hide. No, no absolutely nothing. As one enters the fellowship grounds by its primary entrance, one uh, goes through an archway, a white archway, uh, both who, of whose columns uh, abut on um, two lions, siegeant lions they're called. The lion, in this case though, designates really high spiritual beings. So one passes underneath the archway, one can, can consider that one is embarking in a, on a new phase of their life. They're, they're being, uh, they're entering into a new area. Immediately before one is a pine tree. It's called a Norfolk pine, and right now it's about 120 feet. It was planted in the early days of the fellowship. It's about, um, in about 1915. Uh, it, it's called a Norfolk pine because uh, it was, that species was brought from the Norfolk Islands in the South Pacific by uh, Captain uh, Cook. And um, just beyond that pine tree uh, is a circle in the center of which is a white cross that has three upper arms on which are placed the three initials CRC, three gold initials CRC, standing for the inspirer of the fellowship um, and um, the head of the Rosicrucian order, the founder of that order, Christian Rose Cross. That, that cross is placed in cardinal directions and it was placed in the circle at the founding, at the formal founding of the fellowship on October 28, 1911. Um, the street on which, the main street of the fellowship is called Ecclesia Drive. One has already gone by the administration building, which is on the left, and at one time a flag was flown for the fellowship bearing its, um, its symbol, which consists of a white cross um, that has seven red roses around its upper uh, portion, the upper arm, and it's in a background uh, of a star with the single apex pointing upward. Uh, next to the Rose Cross Circle is on a metal post is the Rosicrucian emblem, which is created by, I believe if this is correct, 108 light bulbs. This was given by a member, I believe it's in 1917, and at that time electricity was still a fairly recent development. And it was quite something to have this showing in the area. The seven roses uh, designate the purified blood that a, a member is working on so that uh, they can advance their development. This will enable ultimately the conscious working and appearance in the higher worlds. The blue background designates uh, divinity or the Father. The red color designates the Holy Spirit. And the, uh, the golden rays designate the Christ power. This, this, this in its totality shows uh, Trinity or God in manifestation as a Trinity. And it has its human counterparts in the threefold spirit. The, the symbolism is very dense, and there's a, quite a bit more that can be said about that. Then we pass a uh, cafeteria, which was uh, built actually in 1914, and additions were made to it later on. And then we pass a chapel on the right, which is called the Pro Ecclesia. Pro means, of course, before there had always been envisioned 
the desire to build a, an ecclesia or a temple. And uh, so this was created or built in advance of the temple, and it was finished. It was erected in a remarkably short time, something like four months, completed in 1913. Mm -hmm. There is a remark that it is of a Spanish or Moorish, Moorish style, and that's in conformity to a lot of the buildings in the area. The old mission is built in that, in that architectural style. And um, further on, there, are, there was a major building that's no longer here that was called the Rose Cross Lodge. And one then uh, proceeds uh, to the guest house. Formerly, that was called the sanitarium. That was finished in 1938, and that was built to house people who were coming here to be healed of various disorders. It has subsequently become a, a, a residence for both workers and for guests who attend uh, our, our summer school or who are visiting the area in Mount Ecclesi and want to spend some time here. If one views the uh, healing department uh, from the from above, one sees that it is cast in the form of a cross. Um, in this case, it's less the Latin cross than a Greek cross. The arms are, are more equal, the forearms are more equal. And there's a cupola over the what would be the transept where the two arms intersect. And this is where a chapel is located and healing services are conducted in this chapel every morning for persons who desire to be on the healing list and to receive healing assistance. Um, there is the emblem of the Rosicrucian Fellowship in, in glass um, in that chapel, in the dome, and the light coming through that cast a beautiful effect on, on the room. It's a lovely room to be in. It's very has a very healing sense to it. One other thing about the Leo um, significance, that is to say the, the, the lion significance, um, when we're talking about the, the two siegeant lions which are at the entranceway to the fellowship grounds, um, the Mount Ecclesia, or rather the Ecclesia Drive itself is in the Leo form. All of the signs have logos or, or um, symbols, and the Leo sign looks like um, <clears throat> you could describe it either as a as a um, N, a letter N, or simply a, a hemisphere. Um, and the temple is inscribed in a circle that is at one end of this Leo um, script or logo, and then it rises up and the upper part of it passes the guest house, and then it, it descends again, goes past the, the Rose Cross circle, and then comes out through the archway, and this exactly shows that Leo character as it is in astrology. The, the temple itself was uh, the cornerstone for the temple was built in 1914, but um, due to lack of funds, um, among other things, the temple was not actually begun, its phys physical structure was not actually begun until 1920. It also was raised in a remarkably short time. Its architect, a gentleman from San Francisco by the name of Kramer, uh, did the work for us, but Max Heindel actually prepared, he did the diagram for it, he did the original um, blueprint, created largely the blueprint for it. Shows, indicating he was a man of many talents. One enters in through two doors, each of which bear either the Leo uh, lion uh, or the Aquarian uh, water bearer and they're inscribed in the wood, incised into the wood. One enters through the two pillars. You can also talk about the two pillars at the entranceway, too, and these designate a variety of, of um, 
uh, uh, features or facets. It describes the feminine and masculine polarities in each individual. Uh, it describes the uh, two nervous systems in, in an individual. It describes the two paths that an individual may take depending on their own temperament, the, the, the mystic or the occult path. When one enters into the temple, one uh, is in a primarily circular area. Um, up above there are 12 panels, each of which designate one of the 12 principal uh, astrological signs. Uh, the pews in which the person sits are, uh, are each inscribed with one of the signs, and so that people of any one sign all sit in one in a pew designated by that sign. This is in order to to both uh, organize the in, the the uh, energies of the individual in an appropriate way, and to. Uh, to keep this, that organization consistent from day to day. Um, healing energy, the purpose of entering, of being in that temple is to generate healing force. A person does not go in there to pray for themselves. The purpose is to, to generate uh, impersonally um, healing energy which is um, <clears throat> used um, for healing work. The fellowship itself is the preparatory school for the Rosicrucian order, and it is regarded as the herald of the Aquarian age to provide the information that individuals, certain individuals at this point in time need in order that they can begin to live life um, with more enthusiasm, because there are a lot of rather uh, disappointed or dis uh, disillusioned persons who have not been able to find answers to some basic questions that have been put out of their mind and uh, these questions had to do with the fundamental uh, principles of life. Where did we come from? Why are we here? And where are we going? Well, my mother uh, was a student in 1936 and I was 13 years old and I grew up with the philosophy from there. But um, I went to several other churches or religious organizations and none of them answered any question that I wanted to know until I reread my mother's Cosmo Conception book and it gave me all the answers. The Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception, it answered all my questions like where did I come from, where am I, why am I here and where am I going? Uh, what brought me here this year was to return to the summer school like I've done for the past four years. It helps to teach me in connection and with the Rosicrucian Cosmic Conception uh, the philosophies of the fellowship and also the astrology section uh, which um, to me is difficult to learn on my own. You have to have more or less personal instruction so that, that's another reason why I came here. I'm not much good at correspondence, I'm afraid. <laughs> at the school, we had approximately 40 students, probationers and students, and, and ordinary people came in just to hear the lectures, hopefully to be members. The experience of being on the grounds, the high vibrations, gives you a feeling of uh, elation. In, when you come here, you, it's so, it elates you so much that you want to come back. And that's why I keep coming back year after year. <laughs> when I am here, what I try to accomplish is just to help the fellowship to go in the 20th century in a good shape and in the best way uh, we could go on spreading the teaching. So I try to uh, computerize the work here to help uh, with that kind of work and also to bring the teaching on internet. These are my goals. You know, I think that teaching can be helpful to a lot of people who just choose to study it 
and are inclined to, uh, uh, to look for answers to their questions. So this is, uh, this is one of my, I think, one of my tasks, just to make this teaching available to as many people as possible. Once you get involved with the fellowship, you live and breathe it because you know it's the truth and it's logical. It's the only answer to life. And that's, that's why I come here and that's why I belong to the fellowship because of that. Like again, where did I come from? Why am I here and where am I going? <laughs> 